internet, what is up? Cat Burns here. Welcome back to my lair. Yo, it's been a little while, you and me, sitting down like this. What's up? I hope you're having a great day or a great night, wherever you are. I don't know. It's nighttime right now, so I'm actually not drinking a beer. I'm drinking a tea, an herbal tea. I don't know about you, but if I drink beer too late at night, especially the kind of strong ones that I tend to drink, I can't sleep. And you know what I like? I like to sleep. So last year, around September, I did my first tutorial ever for Logic. I talked about how to make a demo. It was very basic, and I thought I would continue that today and do a part two and do a little bit more in depth about how to make the audio sound good, a little bit more in depth in editing, and I hope you like it. I like learning things a lot, and I'm hoping that someone watching this is also keen on learning something. If you're not into it, that's cool. I'll be back next week with a different kind of video, and you can also rewatch my old ones if you don't like tutorials. So let's get right into the tutorial and we're going to call it getting rid of noise with cat. <laughs> let's go. We go down to Logic Pro 10. We pop that baby open. We're going to make a brand new project and we're going to make an audio track with I'm using the Duet USB as my interface. And I'm going to turn off my monitor just for a second because I have the speakers going and a microphone, always a bad combination if you do not want feedback. So in my first tutorial, I talked a little bit about how to make a basic demo using MIDI and audio. And I thought I would continue this with a few little tricks that I think sound great for that stuff as you go along. So my first uh, go-to is I would like to show you what a noise gate is. Noise gate is um, used to control the volume of your audio signal. So similar to a compressor, which attenuates signals above a certain threshold that you set, noise gates attenuate signals below the threshold. So you basically set a threshold and it won't pick up whatever is below that. So if you have a low hum in your room or some background noise or your neighbors are sort of talking and you don't want to pick it up, you can set a noise gate to not pick up something below where you set it. And this is really helpful, I find, when I'm doing voiceover and everything is very much, you know, audible. And sometimes my fridge turns on. So this is a great way of just tackling stuff like that if you have a home studio or if you're just, you know, battling frequency sounds like many of us are. So where you find noise gate is down here. You So below here, you're going to find this little guy. Highlight that. Click it and go to dynamics and noise gate. And mono is your only option. I like to leave it just a little bit below half. Um, it really depends on what you're working with, what your room is like. Generally, I mean, I I have my stuff for voiceover and stuff for singing already set up kind of in presets. This is a brand new one, so it's not going to be the same. It depends on your room. You can give it a go and record some stuff and really play with this, adjust it, see how you feel, see how it sounds. And if you put it too high, it will start to cut off a little bit of your speech and a little bit of your singing. So keep that in mind, don't put it too high. A ah, little sip it on my tea. And another thing you can play with is a compressor and there's a lot of things you can do in this and my friend Heather actually just taught me all about compressors. I'm really excited to learn more about it. I'll probably do a separate tutorial video on this particular compressor. But until then, I think to keep it simple, you can just set your preset compressor for voice. We'll do a studio vocal today and it sets everything up for you, and you can also play around with those. So as you know, I'm keeping this very basic, so turn it on like that, highlight blue equals on. We're keeping it nice and basic just so that you don't get too ahead of yourself, and you know, we learn together. So I'm gonna sing a little bit of a song, I'm gonna pop my headphones on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna record a little bit of a vocal, and then we're gonna start working on it, now that we have the noise gate and the compressor, and we'll add some more effects and see how it sounds. Have a little sip of tea. When I feel small in your presence, I'll reach taller than the trees. I'll sing my song. And a shortcut, you can press enter to get back to the beginning of your track and spacebar to play. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's add some nice reverb. So what we can do is press this, and this is for your little controls down here. So as we play it, you can adjust the reverb and the ambiance. 
And you can also adjust. I tend to like a little bit more high end on my vocals because I have a little bit of a lower. So that sounds nice. Okay, so shall we record a harmony? So if you like the way that this is sounding, you can actually just duplicate the track by pressing Apple D and or Command D, and that brings all your settings down into this other track. So make sure it's highlight, highlighted R for a record. And, oops, take that off. I have speakers on. Don't do that if you have speakers on. If you have headphones on, which I'm going to do in a second. Okay, so now we're going to record a harmony. Small in your presence. Okay, and now we have a lovely little harmony. I have a lovely little harmony. So what we can do, as I showed you earlier, is to do this. You take away the parts that you're not actually singing. But an even better way to actually um, get into the fine tuning of taking away all the bits and pieces is you double click on this and it shows your edit bar. And with this is great because you can do a little bit more fine tuning and you can find little sounds like breaths like that. And you can get rid of it. So you can either, so you can drag this here and make sure this clip is highlighted and press command T. And there you go. And takes it away. And you can also even more zoom in by sliding your fingers out if you have a trackpad. And you can take away all that stuff that you don't need. So then you get a really nice smooth vocal without any little pops or or breaths or um, sort of stumble sometimes. And it's a great way to just kind of clean it up. And you know, the mouth makes a lot of funny, weird sounds. And sometimes you do not want to hear them in a vocal track. So this is a good trick for just really quickly tidying things up. Okay, so then we can turn this backing harmony down, turn the input off. We don't really need that while we're not recording. And you know what? Why not do a third one? Let's make this a giant choir. And this could just be a vocal track. Why not? We're going to add a little bit of MIDI, but not for a little bit. Still going to do a couple more vocal tracks. For this one, I'm going to press Command D again to duplicate the settings because I really like the way they sound. I'm going to turn on the monitor for my headphones. And I'm going to record again. If you want to toss one of these into a particular ear, this is your panning. So you can slide here or here. I'm going to leave them in the center, center for now, which should be a zero. And you can do whatever you choose, and it's great to kind of play around with that stuff and see what you prefer. So I'm going to record a third harmony. Into the breeze. So I did a lower harmony there, and I'm going to duplicate this straight away. I'm going to do another one just to get a bunch of stuff going, and then we're going to add some instrumentation. And then we're going to just mess around with these tracks and get some fun stuff going on. All right. Ba, ba, ba. Great, so now we've got some acapella bub buzz. Duplicate that again. We're gonna do this, and I'm gonna get you this into my left headphones. Ba, 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 ba. And one more for good measure. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. These are not perfect, obviously, because I'm just sort of doing this on the fly. If I was doing this properly, I would spend a lot more time on each one. So I'm just going to automatically highlight all of these. First of all, I'm going to put them back in the center. Actually, you know what? I'm going to keep them slightly panned. Put this one in the center. I'm going to highlight these three um, since I know that they only start here and I'm going to drag them back to where they start. So I think because these three are kind of a bit more choral. I'm going to add a bit more of reverb to them. Oops. Highlight the track to do the same thing. Next track up, do the same thing. And I'm going to get these two guys a bit lower and um, take out some of the highs because they were a bit on the low end and I want to keep them that way. Don't worry about the compressor yet. Okay, so how is this sounding? Okay, and actually while I'm here, a good rule of thumb is to always keep the loudest volume I have at actually minus three decibels. This gives you a little bit of headroom once you mix, uh, oops. Once you mix and once you master, it gives a little bit of headroom um, so that if things are turned up, it's not going to blast out and sound awful. 
So that's just a good rule of thumb. So I generally keep everything below minus three decibels. So now that we have that, okay, so what sort of instrumentation can we add? I don't have my MIDI keyboard hooked up and some people don't even own a MIDI keyboard. So I thought I'd show you how to do it with your keyboard. So we're gonna do a new track. You go to track, new track, new software instrument track. So you could, there's a shortcut if you need. And then you go to view and you go to, where are you? Oh, sorry, window. And you go to musical typing. Show musical typing. So here we are. So this, as you see, corresponds to your keyboard and it's super fun and great if you do not have um, a mini keyboard or if you're traveling and you just need to get a few sounds. So let's find what key this is in. The night feels more well, this is a good reason to do this while you're actually singing it because my ear voice, I clearly did in between a C and a B and um, info brings up your instrument information. So right now it's on just electrical piano and we're going to go to this tray and we're just going to select some built-in instruments because if we're working without an without a MIDI keyboard, I'm going to assume that you don't have any plugins because let's keep things simple. So let's do experimental and let's do something like, let's do some pads. Let's do some experimental pads. What does this sound like? Oh, it's kind of crazy. Uh, okay. Oh, my dog's hanging out in the background there. Okay, so we're going to use this keyboard to give us a little bit of instrumentation without getting too close to or too much attack because, um, I'm not singing exactly on the key. The night feels more your new track, and we're gonna just build on and gonna make it a little bit crazy. So, new software instrument track, and we're gonna go to this tray again, and let's do hmm, strings, and maybe no, that's too much. Yeah, those are kind of... Basically, it doesn't sound amazing, but you can see that I messed up a line here, and the best part about MIDI is you can just move it around. So, I think it was... There's one where I definitely hit the wrong note. Move that down. And these two were not good either, so I'm gonna get rid of get rid of that F and just string that along. And this one. Drag that back to where it was. There's another one up here. Well, it's not perfect, folks, but you know what? It's just sort of showing you how things work once you get it going. So that's basically our track, and I showed you a little bit more about noise gate, a little bit about compression. Now you know how to adjust MIDI if you made a mistake, and you know that, you know what? It's totally fun to just record a bunch of stuff, and it doesn't have to be perfect, and it's super fun and good for you to just play around with it. So let's hear the full track. When I feel small in your prison box, I reach taller than the trees. I'll sing my song to the mountains. Send my voice into the breeze. So there you have it. There's my second tutorial ever. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. 
I learned something doing it. Uh, it's always a little bit different teaching something to someone, you know? It's a bit different than just messing around with it on your own. You have to sort of think a bit more, and that is good for me to practice. I'll see you in a week, and it'll be a brand new video every Wednesday, as always, and you should come follow me on social media. You know, I post stuff in between. You can learn things. We can do things together. We can talk. And if you want to join the Secret Club, come join us on Patreon. We're very close to our first goal, which includes me sending a brand new song that's never been heard before to all my patrons. So all the info you need to know is down below. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Stay cool. Send my voice into